Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. We are from Group 4, and we will be presenting our chapter about Apple's iPhone launch, how customer attitudes change. Okay, our member consists of two. The first one is me, Zafira Jagadita, with three last digits of my NPM is 021, and I'm not alone, I'm I'm with my friends. My name is Rena Tania, with last three digits of my NPM number is 49. So, I want to explain attitude formation. What is attitude formation? So, attitude form formation is refers to the process by which consumers develop their attitudes or opinions toward products, brands, services, or other entities. Consumer attitudes influence product adoption. So, marketers analyze attitudes to refine strategies. Attitudes form through exposure to stimuli they influence but don't always align with behavior. Okay. So the next is about three component attitude model. So there is three, cognitive, cognitive, and affective. The, the first one is cognitive. Cognitive is a knowledge and perception of product or brand features and express it as a belief about a brand. So cognitive is the first component of the three component model of attitudes. It represents the person's knowledge and perception of the feature of the attitude object, which collectively are the belief that the object possess or does not possess specific attributes. So the next is effective. Effective is emotion and feelings about a product or brand express it as a favorable or unfavorable attitude toward a brand. So it is the second component of the three component model of attitude. It represents the person emotion and feelings regarding the attitude object, which are considered evaluation because they capture the presence overall assessment of the attitude object, like uh, to extent to which the individual reads the attitude object as a favorable or unfavorable, good or bad. And then the last one is cognitive. Cognitive is a uh, action or behavior toward a product or brand and express it as a uh, intention to purchase a brand. So this is uh, the third component of the three component model of attitudes. It represents the like, likelihood that an individual will behave in a particular way with regard to the attitude object. In consumer behavior, the cognitive component is treated as an expression of the consumer intention to buy. And then the next is about multi-attribute models. So the first one is multi-attribute attitude models. So models that portray consumer's attitude as a function of their assessment of the object prominent attributes. And then the next is attitude toward object model. A model stating that a consumer's attitude toward a product or brand is a function of the presence of certain attributes and the consumer's evaluation of those attributes. And then the next is attitude toward behavior model. A model stating that a consumer's attitude toward a specific behavior is a function of how strongly he or she believes that the action will lead to be specific outcome. And then the last one is attitude toward the ad model. A model maintaining that a consumer from various feelings and judgment as the result of exposure to an advertisement affect the consumer attitude toward the ad and beliefs and attitude toward the brand advertise. And then the next is about attitude motivational function. The first one is utila utilitarian function. The utilitarian function reflects the utilities that brand provide when a product enables us to perform certain tasks in the past, our attitude toward it tends to be favorable. And then the next is ego defensive function. The ego defensive function maintains that people form attitudes in order to protect themselves from sensing doubt and to replace uncertainty with feelings of security and confidence. And then the third is value expressive function. The value expressive function maintains that attitude reflects 
consumers' value and beliefs, and that marketers can create ads that either support or refute this notion. And then the last one is knowledge function. The knowledge function hold that people's attitude reflect strong need to understand the character of the people, event, and object they encounter. And then the next is the elaboration like likelihood model, the proposition that attitudes can be changed by either one of two different roads to persuasion a central road or a preparal road, and that the cognitive elaboration related to the processing of information received via each road is different. So the next is conflict resolution. Conflict resolution refers to the process by which consumer address and manage conflict or disputes that arise during their interaction with products, services, or brands. And then the next is cognitive dissonance. The mental discomfort that people experience when facing conflicting information about an attitude object. And then the next attribution theory, a theory focuses on how people assign casualty to events and form or alter their attitude after assessing their own or other people's behavior. And self-perception attribution. A mental interpretation that reflects the way people see themselves when they form causalities about prior event, which consists of internal and external attribution. And the next explanation will be explained by Rhea. Okay, so next is about customer individual factors that makes uh, customers' attitudes change in Apple. So the first one is gender age, marital status, status, and sexuality. So the gender of a consumers can influence the decision-making process, even though marketers do not follow a particular traditional strategy and try to adapt in a period in time where more sex role has changed and stereotypical approach are still being used. This same approach applies to men as well, men being perceived as too aggressive and muscular, enjoying manly activities, Cities and buying manly products, but uh, based on Solomon 2002, there is a noticeable swift towards men being more compassionate and friendly, enjoying their friendship with other men. Next is personality and lifestyle. So it is a unique physical and digital makeup for each individual and it influences on how a person reacts to his or her environment. And every individual is different with a different personality, but the personality cannot be considered stable since it changes with age, social status, life experience, success, failures, and other life events. Next is income. So the level of income that determines up to a certain level of types of products and services an individual will buy. So individual with low income are forced to prioritize and buy essential products and services to satisfy basic needs. Next is perception. So individu an individual's perception can be distorted and influenced by different variables. Physical appearance plays an important role. And people tend to attribute certain qualities they associate with other people to products or services or even other people. Stereotype can also influence the perceptions of consumers since individuals use stereotypes to serve as expectation of or outcome of a specific situation, even or people, uh, even or people according to Sigmund and Kanuk. Next is motivation. So another factor that can influence consumer behaviors is uh, motivation. So series of process that causes people behavior and it is active when there are needs that the consumer wishes to satisfy. Motivation can also be seen as the driving force that forces consumers to act. Next is learning. So learning is closely linked with memory. Memory being the storage for the learned information. From a marketing point of view, memory helps of creating nostalgia for consumers. Marketers can take advantage of nostalgia when planning to advertise certain products for different categories of people. And the last one is attitude and belief. So 
added as a set of beliefs and skills that a human being will develop over time through interacting and learning regarding other people, goods, events, and issues. Next slide. Okay, so next is the environmental factors. So the first one is culture. So uh, culture as a very important concept used to understand consumer behavior and is based on beliefs of human societies, long set their rules, behavior, values, tradition, and customs. And a person wants and be a person wants and behavior is heavily influenced by that person's culture, subculture, and social classes. Next is influence of preference groups. So uh, the most decisions are heavily influenced by the opinions of relatives and friends. These opinions contain useful information regarding the purchase, use, and even avoidance of certain brands. Okay, so next is role of a brand reputation in consumer behaviors. The brand image is recognized as the driving force of the brand assets and its performance. The brand image is identified by Karjeluto uh, alongside price as being one of the most important factors that drive a sale. And next is smartphone market and factors influencing purchase of smartphone from point of view of different authors. So when it comes to choosing a mobile phone or a smartphone, uh, usability is one of the most important variables in the decision making process and shortly followed by aesthetics and pose. Next is and the last one is opinions on level of technological value of smartphones. So Today's smartphones are very similar in looks or performance. It is noticeable that most smartphones are using the same design and shape. Most of them offer good performance and good cameras. So, in fact, that smartphones have got to a point where they are all good using modern technology, but this makes them less exciting. Next slide. So, this is how Apple keep bringing consumers. So, Apple's was into service in recent years. There are also more and more places where the company has gone outside and of its comfort zone and brought the Apple brand to other platforms. Once the hook is in, Apple does what any good company does. It competes, but where Apple has always been savvy in a is in prioritizing the experience of technology. Next slide, please. Okay, so that's all from our group. Thank you for listening.